Let's continue our discussion on data clipping and how that relates to bit depth and dynamic range. Basically, manipulating the brightness and contrast too much will remove data from your image set. Increasing the window level will make your image too dark to visualize the anatomy. Essentially, you could manipulate it so much that the screen is entirely black. Increasing the window width too much can decrease contrast so much that you can't really visualize anatomy that you need to see. Basically, just don't mess with the image much, if at all, before sending it to PAX. For a brief review of bit depth, uh, this is just the maximum range of pixel values that the computer can store, or the number of shades of gray possible. This does not include software. The human range is 5-bit, meaning 2 to the 5th power or 32 shades, which is very narrow compared to what a system can demonstrate. Let's introduce the concept of dynamic range compression, or DRC, uh, also known as equalization. Remember, bit depth is the range of gray levels in the monitor or hardware only. Dynamic range is the range of grays available by hardware and software. You're probably thinking, if we can only perceive 32 shades with our human eyes, why the heck do we need thousands of shades of gray to visualize? I'll get to that in a moment. The computer compresses the dynamic range and bit depth for presentation of the image. Think of a zip file on a computer to compress large file sizes. You have large amounts of data that you'd like to send in an email, maybe a bunch of photos to your parents, but all the file sizes are too large to attach, so what options do you have? One of them is to compress the files to reduce the size and make them attachable in the form of a zip folder. Uh, it's the same concept with compression of a digital radiograph, with a few more details. Essentially, the light areas of the image are darkened just a bit, and the dark areas are lightened a bit to make a more uniform image, so you have more gray. Looking at the image on the left, it's pretty black and white, or high contrast, to the point where you can't visualize the lung detail in the right costophrenic angle. After tissue equalization, or uh, DRC, it's going to lighten the really dark pixels and allow you to see a wider range of tissue densities within the same image. With film screen imaging, you had to rely on technical factor changes to KVP and mass to, for example, uh, visualize soft tissue differences. You might not see edema underneath the patella, as in these radiographs, and you lose bony detail with this type of technique. Whereas now, you're able to window level in order to see soft tissue and bony detail within the same image with tissue equalization. What is detail processing? Two examples you might be familiar with are edge enhancement and smoothing. These allow fine detail to be processed as separate components on the image without changing the overall brightness or contrast. It's either going to sharpen or soften the image. They call this decoupling local contrast from global contrast. You're basically manipulating a specific section on the image without changing the whole image. Detail processing can be done in either spatial or frequency domains. It can't be manipulated under the intensity domain because that's what's changing brightness and contrast. Let's talk about kernels in spatial domain edge enhancement. I'm not talking about chicken for you Colonel Sanders fans. A kernel is a submatrix that allows you to do some processing to the image specifically as it applies to edge enhancement and smoothing. Edge enhancement uses kernel processing to sharpen edges within the image. It's easy to overdo and to lose fine detail though. Larger kernels have more pixels, so if the kernel is too small, you'll lose the detail. A great example of edge enhancement using kernel processing uh, operations is here. The image on the left is just fine, but the image on the right with edge enhancement allows you to see much more specific detail. It's sharper, but it also has some image noise or graininess. Unsharp mask filtering is a three-step process to do image subtraction. 
We use subtraction and interventional radiology in special procedures when we want to perform angiograms and remove all of the anatomy in the images except for the contrast injected blood vessels. We don't need to cover this too deeply for the purpose of general x-ray, but it happens in three steps. First, we create an unsharp mask. Second, we create a positive image that flips whites to blacks and vice versa. Step three, we subtract the positive mask. Here's an example from general x-ray where you've got the original raw image on the left, then an unsharp mask is applied, and then on the right we see extreme contrast amplification resulting in a crisper image that masks out some of the soft tissue background and enhances bony detail. Note the addition of image noise here as well. Smoothing uses kernel processing to produce the opposite effect of edge enhancement and minimizes noise. With edge enhancement, you'll have sharper images, but more noise. With smoothing, you won't have sharp edges, but you won't see noise at all. There's two types of noise that you might be able to see. The best way to rid the system of quantum model is to use spatial domain kernel operations. In other words, increase your mass. You need higher exposure to the image receptor to remove model. The frequency domain kernel operations are best for electronic noise. That fix happens in the software system. Here's a good example of smoothing where you have an initially noisy image. Uh, it's still not crisp and it almost looks a little blurry, but you've lost that graininess or image noise. 